Hi, Nisha. Hi, Louisa. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for all your hard work bringing such important stories um, to the public. Society benefits from your documentary filmmaking. Um, so, you know, you help make the world a better place. And we all thank you for this work and for bringing this story to our eyes. Thank you. A beautiful thing yeah. to say. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you became involved in Ranjit's story and what initially compelled you to want to document this family's experience. Mm. Um, so it was it was actually really kind of it was really accidental. You know, there was there was no there was no intention uh, as such. Um, and I was I was actually making a completely different film, and and I was I was focusing on the work of the organization that's featured in the film. Uh, they were running a gender sensitization program for men and boys across the state of Charkan, working in thirty villages, and they'd form these wow. uh, men's and boys groups, and um, and every month for three and a half years, they were meeting with them to talk about ways of being male you know essentially trying to get them to um uh, see masculinity in in a different way and ranjit uh, was one of the people that was enrolled in this gender sensitization program so mm -hmm. that's how i came across that's how i met him and that's how i came across his, his story um but it wasn't i didn't know when I started filming, I didn't know how far the family was going to go. I didn't know how far he was going to take it. I had no idea what to expect. So I just kept, you know, I was filming with him. I was filming two other storylines. Uh, and the and the idea was that I would come back um, after three and a half years of filming. You know, I would, I would come back and then I would put together this film that used his story as a thread, you know, as kind of one of the threads, but I would interweave two other threads and I would make a film that looked specifically at masculinity in India. That was, that was the original, that was the original idea. Huh. It wasn't until sort of two years of editing that everything changed and we just focused on, on Ranjit and um, wow. family. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so then the other thing I wanted to talk about was, um, this family seems so comfortable in front of the camera and I'm so curious did it take time for them to be at ease with your film crew um what steps did you take to ensure the family and the community felt safe enough to allow you guys in to film them and you know what difficult what difficulties did you face I know that some of the women came in and were like, we really need you to go. And you were being threatened, your lives were being threatened. So can you tell me about that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was really, you know, it was, um, it was a process. And I think it was a process that, that both of us took, like the family took and I also took in terms of, in terms of getting to a level of, of, of comfort. So yeah. I, I think for the first couple of months, we were, we were both awkward around each other. Like we were both self-conscious around each other. And for, for me, I was self-conscious because I knew, I knew how sensitive the story was. And I think there was just um, guilt, you know, in terms of, in terms yeah. of even being there and, and, and documenting this. So there was, there was that aspect from, for me. And then I think for the family, it was, it was, you know, obviously I was a foreigner, right. Even though, um, I'm from I'm from India originally. The fact is is that you know I'm uh, I, I come from a different place. I speak a different language normally, and they felt the same about the the crew, like the local crew as well, because they were from the city, you know. So they saw all of us as as foreigners. Um, so that was that was a, a you know just it just took time to kind of find a balance and and, and be comfortable with each other and with the, with the community there were definitely times where they did feel comfortable with us and they were open, you know, which is why we were able to film with them. Yeah. But I think ultimately their, the community's goal was to try to force Ranjit to marry his daughter to one of, one of the rapists and, um, and to drop the charges. And it was so clear at some point that that wasn't going to happen. 
and as soon as as soon as that became clear and as soon as the you know it was the trial was sort of proceeding um things became really tense and and of course there was that scene where you know we were threatened and, and we had to the crew had to leave uh, so that was a pretty intense moment but it, it wasn't I wouldn't say that it was something that necessarily surprised us mm -hmm. because we were aware of the tension but I think when it did actually happen it was it was really shocking like I I didn't quite know I didn't quite know how to respond you know it was um was a was a it was a strange kind of like out of body experience and and actually the way I responded was with real calmness and, mm. and um which wasn't you know I wasn't expecting that but that was literally what happened I just I became really calm as did the as did my crew we were very very calm and calmed wow. everyone down and had that been part of your training as a documentarian to like uh, handle situations like that or no 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 it 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 hadn't been um but i think you know i've been in situations uh i've been in situations like that uh in the in the past i don't know if i would do it again you know because now i, I think be before th there were certain situations that i was in for sure like also in india and once once in africa that were very 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 dodgy um but I was so, at the time I was younger and I was just so determined to, you know, to document and, 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 and to get the story. Yeah. Um, but now I, I think maybe I would, I would be a bit more, you know, a, a bit more, a bit more cautious and um, a, a bit more, I, I, I think I would ask myself different questions you know at least the next yeah the, the next the next time if I'm going to be in a situation that's very sensitive yeah was it quite hard for you then to like it to when you, I know you met with the members of the um social justice organization um and they said it's probably a good idea that you no longer go into the community and, and film yeah. them was yeah. that a real disappointment to you and did you think, oh, no, I'm not going to get the footage I need? Or, I mean, it seemed like you, you were able to finish the film in such a gorgeous and cohesive way and you didn't need that footage. But was there any part of you that was like, oh, no? Or did you fully respect that oh, yeah. wish? Yeah, yeah, fully respected. I mean, you know, I we did try. Um, we did try to... Uh, we did try to kind of work again with the ward member. He was he was actually in some way, I mean, he was a complicated man. A really interesting man. I found him extremely <laughs> compelling. Yeah. yeah. He's very, very compelling. And he was really our kind of go-between, you know, between um, like he was sort of the, the middleman, right? Between us and the community. So so when um uh when that incident, you know, when it when it happened, we did try to work with him and through him kind of broker. Uh, a piece and you know we were we were sort of saying to uh, the families of the men like just meet with us and, and talk to us and and you know let's have a conversation right which is which had been our approach for over a year we've been trying to we really we really really did a lot of due diligence in terms of trying to mitigate any potential kind of fallout of, of us of us being there yeah with the community we really, really tried. We made a lot of effort in, in that regard, and we continued to try um, after they had after they had asked us to stop to stop filming. Yeah. Not because we wanted to go back into the community to film, but because we wanted to um, we wanted to ensure peace. Mm -hmm. We didn't mm -hmm. want to be, we, we didn't want to damage things beyond um, how much they'd already been damaged. So. Sure, you didn't want to go in and then pick up and leave and leave yeah. them. Yes, yeah exactly. Exactly. yeah sure yeah. on that topic actually so Kieran says toward the end of the film those who walk their steps in unison never fail and of course in this context she's talking about her family and her father in particular but it got me thinking about this larger theme throughout the film that stuck out to me and it was the importance of community over the individual in this village um, that is so foreign of a concept for us as Western viewers, right? Um, 
you know, a community like that can seems like it can be a source of tremendous support. But also on the flip side, it can be very difficult to speak out against something um, as ostr being ostracized could kill you. Um, so can you speak about this and also speak about how the process to change people's minds and hearts um, looks different in this kind of a societal structure, in this kind of a community, um, in this kind of community focused village? It's a brilliant question, really. I'd love to ask you about it as well. Like, yes. like ask you, you know, about what, what you felt about that aspect. It's so yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that is the kind of fascinating thing that I that I realized about that world and and why why I didn't judge it or judge what what the villagers were demanding. From from my perspective, you know, also as somebody who is, is a Westerner, you know, as I was raised abroad, um it's it's problematic on the level of human rights, you know, it, it isn't it's not problematic on the level of of culture, you know, because people people believe what they people believe what they believe. And, yeah. and so I don't judge them, I don't judge them or 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 have an aversion to them for that particular belief system or embracing that belief system you know what i mean like it's their culture just as we have a culture here that we adhere to that would be very problematic for a lot of I people will that point of view that you're speaking about right now is so evident in the film yeah yeah yes that was very successful yeah but yeah yeah so you know it's it's like um i feel like i cannot um, I cannot ethically or morally judge something or, or I cannot I cannot judge a particular belief system or, or a group of people for having a particular belief system. Um, but what I can say for myself unequivocally is that um, in certain instances, and I'm a firm believer in, in community and the power of community and the idea of not being so individualistic, you know, uh -huh. I'm a real believer in that. And I think that that is something that India and, and those sorts of cultures, Eastern cultures that, that value community and family, that's what they have to teach us. Um, okay. But when, when it comes to harm, like that, you know, that's where I think you have to draw the line, right? When it comes to, when it comes to harm inflicted upon an individual. So okay. Um, that's where that's where it was you know that was the that was the issue that was the issue for me yeah sure yeah. and I think um, in terms of sorry like just in terms of trying to change that mindset like the the hearts and minds it's with 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 that kind of mindset and those sorts of communities you the only way to do it is through grassroots activism it's really, really that. It's that simple. It has to be. You have to engage, and and the the organization whose work I was I was following. They're called the Center for Health and, and Social Justice. Um, that's what they do. Like they they go into these communities, and it's not. Uh, and they find people in the communities that they feel they can work with, and then those people bring the change. You know, so they're they're empowering people in the community. And those people are the ones that actually that actually create the change. So it's kind of it's sort of ground, you know, ground up. And I think that's really the most successful way to do it. It's so inspiring. And I think we can learn so much from that here. Yeah. Um, you know, and that brings me to the next thing beautifully, which is that, you know, in the States and elsewhere, and correct me if I'm wrong. In this community, even when someone disagreed wholeheartedly with another person's argument or stance, it seemed like they still took the time to listen. Um, yeah. And I admired the efforts made both by the social activists and the village members to have conversations with each other in an effort perhaps to reach each other, even if they didn't in the end, or if they still stuck to their same beliefs, like they still sat down and yeah. spoke to each other in this way that is unheard of now here. 
So can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, that is that is just amazing that you're picking up on. It's it's funny, right? Because people take from any um, work. Uh, it's it's such a, it's such a subjective kind of experience, right? So what you're tapping into are the things. I mean, it's so powerful. What what is obviously resonating for you? Yeah, yeah. No, I I think, and, and this is the other thing that I that I really love about about India. It is such a complicated society. It really is. It's a very powerful society. It has a lot to teach. Uh, it has a lot to teach the world. Um, and and something that I have noticed you know, time and time again is, and you can't say anything across the board about anything, right? Like you can't say what this is true for, about anything. You really can't. But what I have noticed time and time again, and something that I take away, is the the level of engagement and and a recognition of humanity of people's mm -hmm. humanity right there's just a uh there's a way of engaging with people in india and people engaging with each other that i find very powerful so i think that's probably what you're what you're picking up on you know even though they sort of are like you know mahinderji kind of yells at the men you know and and I, I think a lot of people have an issue with with pushpa who's the woman that says don't think like a typical village woman you know and I, it's right, like that's a harsh thing to say but yeah. it's uh those the rules are different and and yeah. the the way people communicate and the the way people take that communication yes. um isn't all isn't personal necessarily right like right. I, I saw that yeah yeah, yeah. it's just a different way of of communicating yes i i really did notice that when the mother um when jaganti is that how you yes. pronounce it? Yeah. when she turns to her daughter and says um you know what do you think of your parents supporting you like this and she doesn't say anything and she says don't be don't be shy you know no one's going to help you in court yeah. and even the way that Pushpa communicated with Kiran, Kiran. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so like straightforward and maybe to some who are not familiar with that culture, thinking about communicating with a girl who was so traumatized in such a sort of forceful and direct and like straightforward way it might seem jarring, but it seemed like that way of communicating was just the standard and it's, and it works. And I think that this, it seems like this social justice um, com community and organization knows that and they know how to reach these people in this way. And um, especially the men in all of these communities. Um, yeah. I want to know more about that. Yeah. The document mm -hmm. that you were going to make, you, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, And something else though, that on the contrary to that, Mm -hmm. um you know ranjit was so different i mean the way that he communicates is sort of like it's less it's straightforward but it's very thoughtful and very gentle um So we learned so much in this film about the importance of speaking out against injustice, violence toward women, um, the power of, power of bravery and honor and sticking by the ones you love. But also in watching Ranjit and how he handles this, we learn how vital it is to create a space or a home where your loved ones feel safe and are able to speak about how they feel, um, to create a space where communication is encouraged. Um, we didn't get to see other households in the community that intimately, so I wonder if it's the norm or not, but Ranjit seems to be somewhat at ease expressing how he feels. You know, he's, he's very introspective and he's articulate about his psychological experiences. And I know that sometimes, you know, in families that I know here, people don't 
speak to each other about how they're really feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't help but wonder if Ranjit, if this comfort in speaking about his feelings may have been a large reason why Kiran felt okay telling her parents what had happened to her. Do you know that she felt she felt comfortable communicating, maybe not comfortable, but she mm-hmm. she told them what happened. Mm-hmm. And they they seem to be a family that talks to one another, you know. Yeah. You know what what she says at the end, what she quoted, right? Like those who walk in unison, they they never fail. I mean, it was the reason I think that they were successful ultimately, you know, in spite of all of the obstacles that they had. Um, against them, it was because they were never a house divided, right? They were always a house that stood stood together. Um, yeah. And there is no doubt that that she, and this is true for survivors a- around the world, um, when they're believed uh, and and when they're supported, um, they they heal, right? They're they're able to heal faster. Um, and and for sure, the fact that her, especially her father, like in that culture, because it is a patriarchal culture, the importance of the father cannot be underestimated. And the fact that he was who he was as a man and and adored her um, with, was was absolutely the reason she felt comfortable talking to him. You know, he says he says to Mahindraji in the film at one point when they're having that conversation in the woods. Um, where, you know, he says, Mahindaji says, you know, is your daughter, like, is she saying anything to your wife that you're not aware of, that you should be aware of? And, and Ranjit says, well, it's not, it's not my wife that she talks to. It's, it's me. Yeah. She tells me things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she tells me things. So, um, and I, and I do think that Ranjit is rare, but I think he's rare, not just in India. I think he's rare around the world. I think he's just someone who is special and 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 someone who is someone who is just motivated like inside of him there is a really strong moral compass and then it was activated so profoundly because it was his child so yes mm-hmm. yes gosh it was such a beautiful film it was so moving <laughs> i was in tears at the end it's just incredible mm-hmm. um that 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 court sentencing was unprecedented right that had never really that it never happened in the state of charkand before Mm -hmm. and you know now the amount of victims who've spoken out has doubled in that area it's incredible it really is such it takes such bravery to do that but as um as Kiran says, you know, anything you do with an honest heart, good will come out of it, right? I, I'm misquoting her, but it's oh. it's a beautiful thing to say. And I think we can all learn from that. And I really want to thank you so much for bringing this story to to all of us. It's it's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you for such a beautiful reading of the film. That's It's amazing yeah. what you responded to. It's so it's really powerful. And thanks for doing this. Of course. Of course. Bye.